I eat like Brian Johnson every day because we both have the shared goal of living longer and healthier lives. Today, I'm gonna show you my five favorite and easiest meals that I eat every single week. And first, we'll start with some breakfast oat pancakes. Oat pancakes are probably my favorite breakfast meal. I have them almost every single day. And honestly, I like them better than normal pancakes. So first, we'll start with three quarters cup of oats and then a half cup of milk. And this is just gonna make the oats uh, absorb the milk so they get a little wet. That way it'll make a better batter. So once you mix up the oats, we're just gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes. Let all the oats absorb all the milk. Okay, it's been 20 minutes, got some coffee and we can finish it now. So now that the oats have been sitting for 20 minutes, we can add in the rest of the ingredients. One banana mash, one egg, then we'll add approximately one tablespoon of honey and then one teaspoon of vanilla. And then we'll add just a pinch of salt. And then using the spatula, we'll just mix it all up. Okay, so we'll just mix it up. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just incorporate it because we're gonna mix it a couple more times. So next we can add one fourth cup of whole wheat flour and then one tablespoon of wheat bran. Okay, and then we'll add one tablespoon of ground flax seed and one teaspoon of chia seeds. So we're adding these because of the fiber and then they also have good fats as well. After this, we'll add one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then we'll add one fourth cup of toasted walnuts. We'll get rid of everything and then we'll mix it all up. Just roughly mix it up, it's not gonna be perfect. And then that's it, it's your batter. Now that we have our batter, we're gonna go and get a griddle to cook these on. We're gonna turn our griddle all the way up to 400 high heat, have a sip of coffee and wait. After the pan is nice and hot, we'll just spray it down with some olive oil. And then we will immediately start putting the batter on. So this makes about eight pancakes if you do it right. Um, sometimes I mess up and make like seven. So just start small and then add the batter to the ones that are the smallest. And then once you get all the batter down, just flatten them out a little bit, make them nice sized pancakes. And if you want a huge pancake, you can do that too. Doesn't really matter. So you know the pancakes are almost ready to flip when you start seeing bubbles form in the pancakes. Get a spatula and I'm gonna stand up to flip these so I don't mess it up. So it's nice and bubbly, just slide in. Okay, and then obviously you could just check them to see when they're done. So these are pretty good. You can see they're nice and browned on both sides. That means they're done. So if you're cool like me, you can use a red plate and start plating the pancakes for Okay, perfect, now those are plated. And then we'll just move this griddle out of the way. Now we're ready for some toppings. So I always like to top some uh, blueberries on it, get some good antioxidants. And then if you really like to use syrup, you can just use honey instead and drizzle the pancakes with some nice natural honey. But don't go overboard. This is supposed to be a healthy meal, not a sugar meal. And then get your coffee and your pancakes and dig it. This is definitely like my favorite breakfast for sure. But we gotta save room because we have four more recipes that we're gonna make today. So let's get on to the next one. Hold up, bro. It's so good. It's literally so good. So next is a loaded sweet potato sheet pan dinner. This is high in protein and low in calories and super nutritious. So to start this dish, what you'll need is a pan, some parchment paper, and then we're gonna take our two sweet potatoes and some salt and pepper. We're gonna cut up the sweet potatoes and lay them flat on the pan. And before you put the sweet potatoes on the pan, just spray the pan with some olive oil. After you do that, you can lay the sweet potatoes on the pan, season them, and then bake them in the oven at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And this is what they will look like. After this, we'll take one pound of ground chicken and our seasonings, combine them, and then cook them in a pan until they're browned. And then when you season the chicken, just season it to taste, put in whatever you like, and then we'll move on. Once you've cooked the chicken, we can set it aside and then cut up all the other vegetables. To be clear, we have 130 grams of cheddar cheese. We have one romaine lettuce, one avocado, and a half of a tomato, and then just some salt on the side. We're gonna top the sweet potatoes in this order, starting off with the chicken. Just evenly spread it as best as you can. And then we will top the cheese and we're adding the cheese to get some calcium. Yes, I know cheese is normally bad. Don't overeat cheese because it's very fatty, but sometimes you need, you know, some sort of calcium. Of course, you can take some kind of pill, but 
I don't really like taking 100 pills in the morning, so we're just gonna add the cheese. And then after the cheese, we'll get our tomatoes and avocado, put those on top, and then the lettuce. You can use romaine lettuce or spinach. Romaine lettuce is just a little cheaper, but definitely don't use iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce is like terrible. It's pretty much just water. It has no nutritional benefit or just very low nutritional benefit, uh, especially compared to spinach or romaine lettuce. Okay, and then we'll get everything off of the table and then we'll top it with some salt. After you add your salt, you could just bake it in the oven for five minutes at 400 degrees. This is just gonna heat everything up. It's gonna heat the cheese up, melt it a little bit, and then you can enjoy your meal. So these are what the sweet potatoes look like when they're done. The best way to eat this is simply with a fork. Just take it and dig in. It's gonna be a little messy. Of course, you're not gonna get everything in the first bite, but yep, the cheese should be nice and melted. So when you're baking this, make sure to not cook it too much because if you cook it too much, then the lettuce is gonna get like shriveled and it's just not gonna taste that great. So just be mindful. It's only five minutes and take a bite. Personally, I love sweet potato, so I love this meal a lot. I don't know, sweet potato is just so good for you. So much better than regular potatoes. Okay, so we'll get rid of this. This is more of a dinner food. We'll move on to a simple, really easy, really good, really healthy lunch next. So the next meal we're gonna be making is a tuna melt and we're gonna cook it in an air fryer, but you can cook it in whatever you want. First, we'll start with some bread. My girlfriend bakes homemade bread for us, so we don't use sliced bread, but if you have sliced bread from the store, you can use that as well. After you get your two slices of bread, we'll just put it on the tray that we'll put in the air fryer and leave it to the side. Then we'll start creating what is actually going to be in the sandwich. So to start, we're gonna be using one can of tuna. Make sure it doesn't have any crazy preservatives in the can. This only has light tuna, water, vegetable broth, and salt. Put it in one medium bowl. Next is three tablespoons of plain Greek yogurt, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and then roughly one scallion, just a little bit of green onion. And then we'll just get a little pinch of salt and pepper just to season it a little bit. And then you just mix everything up, so it's super easy. And I know a lot of you guys who don't eat Greek yogurt, you might be a little concerned. So the Greek yogurt kind of makes it more creamy. A lot of the times in tuna melts, people will use mayo, but mayo is basically just oil. Um, and it's not the good kind of oil. So we use a nice Greek yogurt that gives it this nice texture. It also adds protein. It's good for you. So try to use Greek yogurt instead of mayo. Eventually you'll get used to the taste. It's honestly not that bad. Okay, so once you have combined everything, we will get our bread back down here. And then we're simply just gonna put everything that we've just mixed up and put it on the bread. Kind of paint it on like a brush. So now that we've spread everything out, we just take our three cheese, this is what we like, uh, and just put it obviously on top of the sandwich. And we'll get another piece for the other side. So now we're gonna put our tuna melts in the air fryer for about five minutes at 350 degrees. You pretty much just wanna melt the cheese on top and then crisp up the bread a little bit. Okay, while that's cooking, we'll clean off the desk and come back. Okay, so here are the tuna melts. We'll get this out of the way and then I'll tell you why there's an apple there. So the apple is really just complementary to the sandwich. So we'll chop up the apple. Okay, so once the apples are cut up, we'll start plating everything. So we'll get our sandwiches here and we'll actually make it into a sandwich. Yeah, baby. All right, and then we'll put our apples on. We just throw them on, it doesn't really matter. Of course, you could make it nice but I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I lied. So always try to do your best job, make that a lesson. But anyways, this is what the meal is. It's our sandwich with our apples. And then just as a bonus, we could just add a little bit of cinnamon on top of the apples for some nice presentation and for taste. I mean, I love cinnamon, it's good for you. So this is the meal. And if you stack the sandwich like this, then yes, it gets a little messy. So you can either get more bread or just deal with it like a man. The main benefit of this is that we use tuna, which has great fatty acids in it that isn't found in a lot of other meats or vegetables. It's low calorie, high protein, and then of course, apple is way better than something like chips. So we use this as a substitute. And also the apple is a nice break from the fish. Sometimes it can get a little overwhelming and powerful. So just eat a bite of an apple 
and then it'll taste way better when you eat the sandwich. It's just a nice balance between the two. So now that we've covered breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we're finally at my favorite and probably your favorite part, snacks. Now, I absolutely love snacks. And these two last recipes are my absolute favorite recipes. They're extremely healthy for you, extremely beneficial, and I guarantee you will love them. Or at least I hope you'll love them because I love them. They're literally like my favorite foods in existence. If there was a healthy candy, these would be the healthy candies. So first we'll start off with my favorite protein shake. So these are all the ingredients to my favorite protein shake. But before we talk about the protein shake, we need to talk about these ingredients. The ingredients that you buy are extremely important to your health. So my family decides to eat a super clean diet. We buy things that don't have preservatives or hydrogenated fats like this peanut butter here. See, this is called Justin's peanut butter. And the only ingredients in this peanut butter are dry roasted peanuts and palm oil. While palm oil isn't the greatest, it's significantly better than the hydrogenated oils that they put in regular peanut butters like Skippy's. These hydrogenated oils cause inflammation in your body. This inflammation in your body damages your cells and simply makes you feel worse. So we try to buy ingredients that don't have these hydrogenated oils, preservatives, or gums in them, or at least we try to limit them as much as we can. Now that that's over, I'm gonna get rid of these and we'll start making the smoothie. So first we'll start off with 50 grams of almond milk. And this is almond milk that we make ourselves. This way there is no preservatives in it. A lot of the times companies put gar gums or other gums that basically combine the ingredients together. It's called an emulsifier and all it really does is prevents the almond milk from separating. It's kind of like oil and water. If you put oil and water together, the oil will float to the top and water will stay at the bottom. All you have to do is just shake up the glass and the oil and water will combine again. Well, the gums basically just combine the water and the oil so they don't separate. They do this by holding the oil and the water together. This way they don't float to the top. They're just combined. And those gums stick into your intestines and cause damage to your body. This is when your body gets inflamed. So that's why we make our own. Next, we'll add 60 grams of the Greek yogurt. And of course, this is plain Greek yogurt like before. It could be flavored if you'd like, like a flavored protein yogurt. Sometimes we use those. Make sure it has no red 40 or food dyes in it, which also causes inflammation to your body. Next, we'll add 32 grams of peanut butter and then we'll add one whole banana and one date that we pit and cut in half we just started eating dates and dates are really good if they're combined in something but personally i don't like the texture if they're not combined but it makes a shake taste significantly better it's like one of the best things that we've added to the shake to make it taste like 10 times better so if you don't like dates i highly suggest trying them in something instead of just biting them like a piece of candy. Then we'll add 16 grams of PB Fit. This is like a powdered peanut butter. And then 10 grams of collagen. This helps your joints, hair, nails, skin. And then we're gonna save the ice and just blend this up first. Okay, and then we'll add the ice to this and then we're gonna blend it up one more time. So yeah, this is by far my favorite shake. It pretty much tastes like peanut butter ice cream, and I have it every single time I work out as a little treat. Okay, now that my smoothie is done, it is time to move on to making my favorite cookie dough bites. For me, these are like substitutes for cookies, but better. Since I've started to eat super healthy, honestly, the taste of like oily cookies just disgusts me, so, in my opinion, these are much better. I love chocolate. They have chocolate in them. I think they taste amazing and they are purely almond based. They have almond milk, almond flour, and almond butter. So if you have a peanut allergy, maybe you can eat this. <laughs> so first we'll start with 120 grams of almond butter. Next is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then next we're gonna use a fourth teaspoon of almond extract. 
These two, vanilla and almond, pretty much give it the cookie flavor. A little too much there. <laughs> Oops. Oh man, this smells good. Then we'll add two tablespoons of almond milk. After that, we will add our 50 grams of honey. Again, honey is a much better substitute than granulated sugar. And then you take all these ingredients and mix them until they're well combined. Make sure you get all of the clumps out of the batter so there's not just almond clumps. Sometimes the almond butter can be super clumpy especially if it's getting a little older. And this can take a little bit to mix because there's so many like heavy and thick ingredients. A lot of the ingredients have a high viscosity. So you really gotta work for a couple minutes to make sure that it's all incorporated together. Okay, we'll get rid of all these ingredients. And then we're just left with the almond flour. Now, this almond flour is a little different than the almond flour that you're gonna buy in the store. That's because this almond flour is homemade. It's homemade because when we make our almond milk, we're left with this substance called almond pulp. To make almond flour, all you do is take the almond pulp, put it in a pan, stick it in the oven, and then you get almond flour. So we're gonna take our 60 grams of almond flour and put it in. And we're just gonna mix it all up. And this is pretty much gonna make our cookie, but there's one more step that we need to really make it taste amazing. And the one thing that makes it taste amazing is also something that's extremely good for your brain but we'll get to that in a minute. So when you're mixing this up, it's almost gonna be like wet sand. That's just the texture of the almond flour, and that is entirely okay. That's exactly what you want. You actually kind of want it a little dry because if it's not dry, it's gonna end up like peanut butter and it's gonna stick to your mouth. So here you can see the sand-like texture. You should be able to put your spatula across it and it'll make these little ripples. That's when you know you're good. So now that we have them at a good texture, we're gonna put this to the side and then we're gonna get a pan and some parchment paper so we can form them into balls. This way we can put them into the freezer because this is a no bake recipe. You don't need an oven to do this. It's supposed to make roughly 16 balls. So you just take it, roll it in between your hands and then put it on the parchment paper. So we're gonna take all the cookie dough balls that we have made and we're gonna put them in the freezer for five minutes. Now that the balls are in the freezer, we'll get on to the special ingredient. Now the special ingredient is just 100% dark chocolate and some kind of nuts to top. So we're gonna put these to the side and then we're gonna cut up roughly one fourth cup of chocolate. And if you think that chocolate is bad for you, I'm here to prove you wrong. Dark chocolate is actually extremely good for you. It's extremely good for your brain because it is an antioxidant. It's also high in dietary fiber. And for me, it tastes amazing. It tastes way better than milk chocolate. Milk chocolate is just a candy. There's really no benefit, but dark chocolate is entirely different. So try to get chocolate that is at least 70% cocoa. This is 100% because we have built a tolerance and I actually enjoy the taste of 100% cocoa, but most people don't like it. Most people have to build a tolerance to it, but it's entirely worth it. It's so good for your brain, for your heart, and it just tastes amazing. <laughs> okay, so you just wanna finally chop up the chocolate, just gonna make it easier to melt. So we have our melted chocolate, our balls, and then our topping. Basically what you do is you take a ball you dip it in the chocolate, try to get it at least halfway covered, take it out, let it drip a little, and then immediately put it in the topping. Roll it around, and bam, you got a chocolate ball. So we're just gonna put it back on the tray, and then we're gonna do that for all of these. Okay, so after you're done coating the balls with the chocolate and the topping, you put it back in the freezer for only a couple of minutes. And then if you really love chocolate, after they're done freezing, you can roll them in the chocolate again and top them on the other side if you want. That's it. I'm telling you, even after three hours, these pancakes are still fire. And since we're waiting for my favorite snack to be done, I figured I'd tell you guys about our community. So the whole point of this channel is to improve you financially, mentally, and physically. And since a lot of us have the same goals in that aspect, I've created a community of like-minded people. When this video is released, it will be a free community, but eventually it will be paid. If you're watching this now, you have the opportunity to get into this community for free and join other people who have similar goals as you. So if you wanna talk with other people and figure out how you can improve your life financially, physically, and mentally through self-improvement, 
join our community and start talking with our members. Again, it's free now, but it will not always be free. I can guarantee that. And of course, there are a bunch of courses in that community that show you how I have improved my life financially, mentally, and physically. But other than that, let's get into the cookie balls. These are the cookie balls when they're done. Really, what you're looking for is a good snap of the chocolate when you bite into it. That means everything is right, and then you can enjoy them as a snack. You know how people like watch a movie and eat popcorn or candy and then they don't realize how much they're eating and then all of a sudden it's all gone? That's kind of what I do with these. So like, I'll get tired of work. I'll grab like a container of these. I'll eat like 10 of them, not really realizing. But the thing is that I don't feel guilty because they're actually good for me. So if you want a guilty free snack that tastes amazing, these are it, I promise. And to be clear, I'm trying to bulk up, so I need a lot of calories, and these are a great source of calories and protein. So if you're trying to bulk up, I highly suggest these. They taste amazing. They're like 100 calories per ball, and they're great for you. The chocolate is an antioxidant. All the nuts have extremely high protein. They're so good for you. So enjoy.